that seems oh, you've got be... you've got Optimus, you've got the Cybertruck, you've got two yeah. of the main ingredients, you've got FSD, which is the third. And you got Starship, you know, it's just Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> well, this year is gonna be really, really important for Starship. And um yeah, I am hoping we'll look at that um in a subsequent discussion. But I just wanted to add this. Um this is uh, Icon has been awarded a NASA contract to explore lunar surface construction using regolith. Um, and if you look at these pictures, there's there's a, a starship right there in the background. Yeah. And uh, this could so easily be Optimus and a cyber truck as well, because if you're going to build on the moon, you need labor, you need trucks to haul your stuff around. Yeah. Perfect use case, wouldn't you say? So there's a lot yeah. of room for collaboration. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And when you think of the infrastructure that's required to deploy a crew of workers anywhere, it's incredible. You know, the, the, the crew is just really the tip of the spear. And there's so much else that goes on there. All the logistics and everything else has to go on there. Um, you know, they always talked about an army marches on its belly. That's one of the things that Napoleon discovered is that, you know, a well-fed army is, is a good army. And it's the same thing is that you're going into space. You have all these consumables you have to drag along with you. So, you know, not just the, 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 the air that you need to breathe, but also the water you need to drink and all the food and everything else. And a lot of times that infrastructure requires other people that are just there to maintain that. They aren't actually the ones doing the work. Exactly. So if you just go down that pyramid, it gets pretty bad. Once you start yeah. deploying the bots to do it, all that goes away. And yeah. so if you were to, I think Starship and this, this is like a point of discussion. It, it may be it's, it, you can send a hundred people to Mars or possibly a thousand or something like that. I, I know there's different configurations people have talked about, but mm. whatever that number is, you can probably multiply that by at least a factor of 10 if you are sending the bots instead, bots, because the right. bots don't need to breathe. They don't need to eat. They don't need sanitation. Yeah. They don't need a whole lot of space. They, you know, they keep on talking about that whenever we wanted to, to go in space, we need to have some sort of uh, hibernation. Well, it's really easy to hibernate the bot. <laughs> you know? yeah. So you don't have to worry about that. So you can send the, the force multiplier there is incredible because not only can yeah. we send a greater number there, but when it's there, we don't have all this infrastructure that's required to really maintain them if they were people. So for these yeah. construction projects to work, yes, I think you want a, a team of bots doing most of it with astronauts that are really there to be the foreman and to be kind of supervising everything to make sure everything is going all right. Of course, at the end of the day, we want them to build these colonies so humans can come there and actually enjoy it and see it in person rather than in VR. Yeah, absolutely. And let's not forget, construction sites on Earth are notorious for accidents. Mm -hmm. You don't want an accident happening up on Mars. Um, it, you'd rather lose a bot than a human, mm -hmm. right, any day. And the, it's, just, it's just the moment you have a mishap in space, um, the sort of neg negative publicity that just grows around that is, is um, very restrictive uh, for the evolution of any space program. So the last thing you want is uh, is to have a human casualty on the moon or on Mars. Absolutely. So I just want to play out this video. It's interesting that um, this is the SpaceX uh, animation of uh, arrival on Mars, and uh, it's it's really interesting. Well, I don't know if it was a conscious decision, but you don't see any any humans walking around um, mm. until you know you have starships land, and then you have humans inside the. They'd open the door and and look out onto everything that's already constructed. I, mm -hmm. I, I, it's just a wild guess, but I suppose you never know with uh, with uh, Elon's companies and his teams. There are so many Easter eggs always, um, you know, waiting to be discovered. You don't yeah. you don't have humans building any of that stuff. You just have them arriving, opening a door and uh, looking out. So you know, one of the big question marks for me with uh, SpaceX's plans for Martian settlement was that they've, they've always talked about, you know, in-situ research utilization, generating a local propellant uh, to refuel Starship uh, for the uh, for the ride home and using lunar ice for that. And that's, you know, that's a process that requires a lot of infrastructure setup to, you know, you, you got you to land somewhere that has access to ice and then you have to get, 
you have to extract that ice, you have to melt that ice, you have to purify that. It, 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 well, I mean, you have to at least filter that ice. You know, it's going it's to have dust and dirt mixed into it. And then, um, you, know, you know, use electrolysis to separate the hydrogen and oxygen, and then use the sub reaction, combine it with, with the atmosphere, and then you have to cryocool that, that whole thing and bump it into these starships. And that's, you know, all of that is, I mean, that's like an industry on Earth, right? Oh, that's, absolutely. And Absolutely. the question in my mind was, you know, how are they going to set that up without people on the ground? And mm. um, and I, I I was thinking, you know, for early crewed missions, uh, it might make more sense to bring the propellant with you. And I'd, I'd run some uh, some numbers on how to do that in such a way that you don't you don't actually even need to ref refill. Uh, starts on the surface. You can kind of refill it, refill in orbit, and land with enough propellant to get back. Um, so a way to get crew onto the surface using Starship, such that they could then take those components and assemble it and set up a base that could uh, enable more efficient mm -hmm. transit. But this would dramatically simplify that. And if you could send robots to do that work for you, even if they were teleoperated from, say, Mars orbit, that's something where you, it's easier to get to Mars orbit and back uh, substantially. I mean, it does pose yeah. some additional challenges in terms of radiation exposure and and uh, the greater ex longer exposure to microgravity. But those are they, they are uh, relatively easy solutions for that at yeah. start scale as well. So that might that might be a route to go down. Yeah, I mean, to yeah. be honest, when I when I read this news uh, about uh, the lunar South Pole oxygen pipeline and plans for it. I say, there's no way you could have human astronauts out there. It's just, it's just, it's not practical. It's just not logical. You, this is a perfect use case to deploy bots. I mean, it's not necessary that you have humanoid bots, but bots of other forms when it comes to developing infrastructure in space, either in orbit or on the moon or Mars. Do you see a route for Tesla to explore bots other than Optimus? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely see that. And, and I think the other thing I agree a, a lot with what Ozan said is that if you're looking for some of these resources, the uh, Zubrin's original plan with the in situ was like, he's just taking it out of the air. Well, the air is right there at Mars. It doesn't matter where you land, you can just suck it in and you're okay. And um, however, he did have a problem with the supply of hydrogen. So at that time, it wasn't clear whether there was water ice available on Mars. So they were schlepping the hydrogen from Earth and then processing that into to methane and uh, to get the uh, also the, the water that you would need. Um, and the only other thing they needed was the energy source. So they had a, a small nuclear reactor that would just be easily deposited wherever it had to be. So that was a pretty straightforward, easy infrastructure to set up. But once you start saying, oh, we're going to get ice, and it's like, well, are you landing like right next to a lake that you can just go ahead and throw a hose in there and suck everything up? It's like, no, it's like it's you're probably landing somewhere where you think there's subterranean ice and now you've got to do something to get down to get it. So it's like, oh, already we're going to yeah. have to start drilling or doing something like that. And we've already seen what happened with, with the rover on Mars that, that it turned out it's a lot harder than they thought to be able to drill into some of those rocks. So if you're trying to do something of that scale, it gets pretty tough. But then I agree, I'll, you know, it's the water is not going to be pure coming up. There's going to be everything else you have to do with it. All these other chemical processes, I suppose, potentially, you know, some of the infrastructure that you're just kind of dropping in there and it almost like Legos plugs together, but there's still going to be that aspect where you're out prospecting and trying to find the thing you're tapping into. And that's, that's going to be challenging for people to do it, just like the pipeline you're talking about. So it may be you think of designing a pipeline very differently than you do on earth where you're expecting that you're going to have a lot of workers that are out there you know all these roughnecks that are just going to be out there bringing these <laughs> things in there and bolting them together and, and busting their knuckles all the time as they're just taking the yeah. wrenches and moving all that around and a lot yeah. of times it's done that way because that's like the cheapest way to be able to build it but now you would be thinking a little bit differently it's like okay how do we come up with something that we can deploy over this area that's very rugged where we can do it almost autonomously and a lot of these things can be done autonomously. Yeah, maybe they involve a humanoid bot or they involve some other form of specialized automation that's able to do the job really well. Because all I'm thinking is that if Optimus is out there, it's because we have different sections of pipe that we have to fit together for some reason. But there could be a completely different way that the pipes are put together that could be done with some other kind of agent 
where it's able to go in and maybe do internal welding as opposed to having to take um, you know nuts and bolts and wrenches and everything and try to tie them down. So there there would be other ways of thinking of the pipeline problem different than what we're used to thinking of here on Earth, because the let's say the incentives and what what the costs are are very different than what you have here on Earth. So oh, again. For sure. The Cybertruck is going to look different because it's a very different environment, and you're also going to do different things that may uh, make it least costly. Whereas if you took that same decision on Earth, you'd say, "Well, that's the more expensive option. Why are you doing that?" I mean, the nice thing about the humanoid form is that it's much easier to translate from well, we know how to build things with humans to now we mimic that with robots. Uh, that you don't have to invent a whole new way of of assembling or manufacturing or, or prospecting uh so that's something where right exactly we might we might see more optimus use both on earth and off world than we might otherwise expect for efficiency reasons just because of that right. that ease of translation yes and, yeah and, and that, that's key yeah because what it means is that it, it's you can very easily replace one with the other mm -hmm. so right. if the bot is down a human can go in and do it and vice versa because the tooling is compatible Industrial right. robots, the end of arm tooling is not compatible with any human and vice versa.